You know, November, December and January are dark and gloomy parts of the year, aren't they? Uh, the days are shorter, the weather turns cold and you look out the window and it's grey and you feel a bit grey too. But things feel a lot more dark and gloomy in November 2020, don't they? We're in the middle of a national lockdown and many of us feel lonely and isolated. Uh, Christmas is coming, but it's not it's probably not the Christmas we're longing and hoping for. I've heard the news recently, news reports of families putting up Christmas decorations much earlier than usual. Uh, some people have the tree and tinsel up the day after Halloween. And, you know, in many ways we understand that, don't we? As a nation, we're looking for some kind of hope in the midst of a gloomy year. But our, as Christians, our hope is not rooted in in putting Christmas lights early on the 1st of November. It's not even rooted in a coronavirus vaccine. Great that that might may be, and it's just really encouraging to hear that. The vaccine will tackle the darkness of coronavirus, but I don't think any of us is naive enough to believe that it's going to tackle the other darknesses that we, we face, such as loneliness, growing old and frail, you know, dementia, relationship breakdown. Our hope in the darkness uh, that we feel uh, more keenly than ever isn't rooted in a vaccine. It's rooted in, in Jesus if we are trusting in him. Here's what the prophet Isaiah said in chapter 9 of his prophecy. Uh, the people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of deep darkness, a light has dawned. Isaiah goes on to say that the light is a cause a great joy and celebration. Um, can you think back to last Christmas uh, as you sat down with your family for Christmas dinner with friends and family around you uh, with the succulent uh, chicken, the mouth water, uh, uh, turkey even, uh, the mouth watering uh, pot roast potatoes with family and friends around you. And Isaiah says that this light that's come into the world brings that kind of joy. Can you remember your sports team beating your bitterest rivals to win the league or gain promotion or, or win the cup? And Isaiah says that, that, that this light uh, brings that kind of joy and celebration. And the surprising discovery is that this light isn't a vaccine, isn't the sun, it isn't an object, it's a baby. And here's what verse 6 says, very familiar words to us. But to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the greatness of his government and peace there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding uh, it with justice and righteousness from this time on and forever. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. This baby brings joy because he will grow to shatter everything that oppresses his people. He'll shatter the oppression of illnesses like coronavirus. He'll shatter mental uh, illness. He'll shatter things like war and oppression and injustice. And in their place, he'll set up an everlasting government. He will be a leader we all long for. He will be wonderfully wise, always making the right decision. He'll be a leader who's divinely powerful. And yet that divine powerfulness is mixed with the tenderness of a father. If you're like me, you've probably been looking to our leaders throughout this coronavirus crisis uh, to protect us, maybe to save us from uh, coronavirus and the effects. If I'm honest, I'm jealous a little bit of New Zealand at the moment. Their Prime Minister Jacinda Ardern seems to have worked wonders during the coronavirus crisis. Uh, her government has protected her, their people, seems to see very effectively from the coronavirus. And yet her government will, is nothing compared to what the government of this child will be. He is the Prince of Peace, his rule will bring complete peace and prosperity for his people. Unfortunately, Jacinda Ardern can't, can't do that. He will govern justly. There will be no more injustice, no more deaths, 
in police custody. Of course, I'm talking about the Lord Jesus. And the Lord Jesus, the light of the world, appeared on this planet that first Christmas when things felt for people back then very dark and gloomy too. And as he lived his life, he gave a foretaste of his government during uh, his life as sick people were made well. Dead people were raised to life. The natural world was tamed. He died and rose again and ascended to heaven, promising to return and to bring his wonderful government where sickness is defeated, where death is no more, when there's no more natural disasters, to bring that government in fully and finally. And in many ways, we're like those people in those days and years and hours before that first ever Christmas, longing for the light to come in a dark and gloomy world. And that is the Christian hope, that one day King Jesus will return and permanently change our darkness into brilliant light. We'll experience joy like we've never before. It'll be like the joy of sitting down to Christmas dinner uh, with friends and family, or the joy of your sports team beating a rival, but on steroids, so much bigger and better. So if you're trusting in Jesus today, then there is joyful hope, even in the midst of gloom and darkness, whether that is gloom of the weather, or the situation or life circumstances. We can look away as Christians from the dark and gloom of the season and of the year and look forward to the joyful hope of the return of King Jesus. So as you move on to whatever is next in your, in your day, think, uh, meditate, mull over that glorious joyful hope that we're promised if we're trusting in Jesus. And let that hope sustain you on a great, dark November day.